Kia ora, hello, I'm Philip Duncan. Thanks for joining us for our April Climate Watch Update, brought to you in association with ruralweather.co.nz and our business partners at IBM. So let's take a look and see what is happening in the month ahead because we've got high pressure zones that have been dominating New Zealand for weeks and weeks and it's creating drought like conditions in Southland and we had those big downpours and floods around the North Island recently but the grass isn't necessarily growing. It's gone green but it's not necessarily growing very fast because of the lack of follow up rain. So let's take a look now and see what is coming up in the month ahead and we kick off with April 1st, the wind map that shows the air pressure and this is summing up really where we're going for the next couple of weeks with low pressure seen here in the darker shading coming down on the eastern side of Australia. We've been used to this for the last few months and we've also been used to this big powerful high pressure zone south of Australia drifting out into the New Zealand area and yes it sometimes brings in a cooler southerly but overall it's warmer than average and drier than average around the South Island and the North Island after all that rain low pressure still out to the east but the high pressure zone is dominating and I think we're likely to see this weather pattern continue on at least for the next couple of weeks. So then let's go get into the La Nina side of things now. The Bureau of Meteorology out of Australia uh, providing these maps and guidance for the last few months. They've been exceptionally accurate. So uh, we really do respect the team at the Bureau of Meteorology in Australia for tracking La Nina. So we're still in La Nina but we're right on the edge of getting back into that neutral zone. It is taking a little longer than originally thought but it is fading away and with New Zealand so far from the equator it doesn't necessarily equate to rain but we still have that that chance April and heading in towards June now where we just might still have a touch of La Nina in the atmosphere and that creates uh, a little bit more rainfall to our north and whether or not that actually comes down and hits New Zealand that is a little bit more uncertain and as you get right through into August not a huge swing back to neutral so that means that the sea temperatures north of New Zealand will remain a little bit warmer than average. Speaking of sea surface temperatures and warmer than average, it's a bit depressing to bring you this news. The map on the right hand side, this is the uh, basically the marine heat wave carrying on at the moment where it's uh, warmer than usual. Down here around Fiordland, you know, we saw the news story the other day about the glaciers melting away. Seeing very high temperatures like this in the sea is not good. It melts the, the uh, ice even further and it makes for warmer overnight weather as well. Sometimes when we say it's warmer than average for the month ahead and you have cloudy kind of cold days you wonder like that can't be right. But sometimes warmer than average is because your overnight lows are much warmer than usual. Your days might be a bit miserable so it feels cold but the long range out of the month you're actually looking at a month that was warmer than average and that's what we're seeing in the sea temperatures at the moment that is helping lift uh, air temperatures as well and this is the actual temperature at the moment so still pretty mild in northern New Zealand if you want to go for a swim but if you want to go for a swim around Otago Peninsula around about 14 degrees you got to be a little braver in the south. Let's get into the forecast here we are for week one going into April and we break up the highs and the lows as we usually do. So we're seeing a lot of low pressure. We just saw that on the animated wind map, all the low pressure in this area and coming right down towards Eastern Australia. Classic La Nina really when you look at that. But the high pressure zone south of Australia is absolutely enormous as we kick off this month. This high is really huge. Not just the size of it but the power inside it as well, the 1038 hectopascals that's very strong for this time of the year in our part of the world. We tend to get that a little bit more um, in towards the end of winter and start of spring. So this is expanding all the way up to about Darwin and all the way down to the Southern Ocean and this is where the windy westerlies are. Normally in spring and in autumn we get those windy westerlies up and across New Zealand but for now that windy weather is south of us because of these powerful highs which are pushing it further away from our area. So yes, a few southerlies coming in, a few showers in the east, but there's nothing too major as we go into the first week of April. By the second week, we've got some life here to the north, a potential tropical cyclone forming in the first week or two of April. Now there's a lot of low pressure up here and what can happen, and we've seen this already this year, you can get a storm that starts to form and then another low nearby starts to steal its energy. And when it does that, you end up with a rainmaker, not a named tropical cyclone. You need to have those winds gale force all the way around the center. But this one here has the chance uh, of forming into a cyclone, but there are other lows nearby which could change the whole setup of this. So either way, we look at this big box here and say that is a low pressure zone. 
but there's a lot of high pressure coming out of Australia, slowly moving into New Zealand. Southerlies coming through, so it's not hot all the time, but it is leaning drier than average. Now, as we get into the third week, what those two maps there don't show you is what happens with that tropical low. But it looks as though with a powerful high like that drifting in, it's going to be pretty hard for a tropical rainmaker to come on in. It's going to take the high to stall, and that will allow that low to drop down closer to New Zealand. Long range maps suggest low pressure is out to our northeast and a little bit out to the east. But this is a big block of high pressure from Perth to Adelaide to Melbourne, Sydney, and straight across to Auckland, Wellington and Christchurch. So this is a lot of high pressure coming through as we go into April. It might be a little more settled than some of you might imagine for this time of the year. But I have to say, as we get to the end of week three, those windy westerlies I was telling you about, they are getting a bit closer. And we're seeing the centers of the highs just lift up a little bit further northwards, not quite so much down here in the Southern Ocean. So that's a sign of some change, but at this stage, nothing too major and perhaps a bit of a cooler change here with that blue line heading northwards. So what does this mean for rain as we go into the month of April? Well, here is the first week's departure from normal. Red pink shows where it's drier than usual and the blue shows where it's wetter. So we're seeing some wet weather on the west coast, uh, but the areas that need the rain the most, like places like Southland, bit borderline for getting proper rain in there. In fact, most areas are leaning drier than usual. So what is the rainfall? Well, here are the first 10 days of expected rainfall in New Zealand. This is the European modeling, ECMWF. And it is showing here these rainfall totals down here in the blues, greens, yellows, 0.2 to maybe 10 to 15. So 15 would be a bit more welcome for this area because it is very, very dry. But eastern areas and parts of central Otago, South Canterbury, very dry. On the west coast, over 100 millimeters coming though. And in the North Island, the greens and the yellows, bottom of the scale, just a few showers up to maybe 15 or 20 millimeters in those yellow gold areas. Heaviest downpours in the North Island look to be just around the ranges in the south there, maybe 50 millimeters falling up there, but not so much lower down. So that's the first 10 days. This is the first 16 days, and this is using the GFS modeling out of America. This one here, I've just focused a little bit more on New Zealand with Australia on the side, so you can sort of get the bigger picture going on. So you're seeing all that tropical rain up here. We're talking 100, maybe 200 millimetres of rain. So that's the tropical lows and storms that I was telling you about. And they do come in towards the New Zealand area, but it looks as though high pressure may well block it back. So the rainfall totals for the first half of the month Unless we get hit by a cyclone, that's sort of like the wild card effect. If we don't get that, 5 to 30 millimetres is all that is forecast. That's not very helpful for places like Auckland and Waikato, Hauraki Plains, Coromandel Peninsula. They all need more rain to get the grass growing. Similar story down here around the eastern South Island and especially down around Southland where those rainfall totals are not that great. The 100 to 200 over on the west coast, up in the mountains, a lot of that as well. And there's a lot of low pressure in that eastern side of Australia. That's part of the reason why we're seeing those rainfall totals lift up over on the west coast. So the Niwa soil maps, the departure from normal here, uh, what we're seeing is all that rain that's been falling has made the eastern side of the North Island pretty wet, soil moisture-wise. But you can see Waikato, Hauraki Plains, Coromandel, parts of Auckland, they still need more rain. You know, the rain made the grass go green because it was brown before, but it didn't necessarily make it grow a lot. We need more rain here and in the west. The west coast has got rain coming. So Southland stands out a lot on that map with the big red area. So when we take a close up look of Southland, this is the rainfall right through to the 16th. You're seeing all that heavy rain on the west coast and some of that spills over. And so you get into this area here of 50, 60 millimeters right up against Fiordland. But this is a bit of a, a blurry snapshot. By that I mean it's not high resolution, and that means that the rainfall, and by the way, high res means nothing either. I mean, long range, because it just means it might be a more detailed version of something that's wrong. <laughs> so we look for the big picture, and what we're seeing is quite clearly the West Coast got rain, East Coast very dry, only talking about 10 millimeters in two weeks around places like Omaru and Palmerston. Uh, but that sort of rainbow effect, it gets sort of a better chance of rain the further west you go. That's the main takeaway I want you to have. And uh, don't forget, go to ruralweather.co.nz to get the most accurate rainfall for your part of New Zealand.
So let's take a look at the rainfall for April. This is from IBM, our business partners, and it shows most of the country leaning drier than average. A little bit of wet weather coming in here, probably due to the southerlies. The big highs out here driving in a southerly with showers. So I think that's the reason why we're seeing a bit more normal rainfall there. And in the very north, that's the chance of a tropical rainmaker brushing by. And on the day we recorded this, it was really just the very top of Northland and the far north in that zone. So that's for the month of April. This is April, May and June, the next quarter coming up and getting into winter as well. And it shows the North Island around about average. Average is actually in the sort of white color, but a little bit of bluey green. And even a little bit into the yellow is okay. That's just leaning a little bit drier than average. But down here in the south, we're actually going a little bit further into that much drier than usual setup. So for the next three months ahead, while there is some rain on the way for Southland, it may not be huge amounts, not just yet. And of course, this is the best thinking on the planet, but it's not 100% accurate either. So we'll always be looking for that chance where we're wrong and there could be a rainmaker that suddenly arrives. That's why we have a daily news service to cover those sorts of things. So here with the temperatures, boy, this has not changed in a year and a half. New Zealand continues to lean half a degree to one degree above average. And I put over here Australia so that you can see it's not a glitch because Australia has different shades, <laughs> uh, but New Zealand has been in that yellowy orange shading which is half a degree to one degree above average. It's been like that for over a year now. So yeah, not, not good really. So that is all from me. We've got a few thunderstorms on the map here. This is April 1st. I quite like these maps. It looks a little bit erratic with the speed of the lows, but it shows you where the low pressure zones are and where the thunderstorms are. And at the moment, much quieter in the New Zealand area following all those storms that we had uh, in the month of March. So thanks so much for all your support. Hope this video has been helpful. Please do leave comments on YouTube if you've got any. Otherwise, we will see you again in one month for our next Climate Watch update.